Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. Action requires courage. The first demand for doing is that you must be courageous. Action requires courage. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. Numbers 13, 30. Action requires courage. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. We heard the word. We understand what God has said. We've taken out time to understand the demands. He says, let us go up at once and possess it. It takes going up to possess. Not just talking about it. Not just meditating on it. Hearing the information and the instruction is wonderful. Meditating upon it until you believe is wonderful. But if and when you are done with becoming, the next thing is to go up at once and possess it. For we are well able. We are well able to overcome it. Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4. This scripture has blessed me for many, many years. Pay attention as I read. Deuteronomy 21 to 4. We're wrapping up. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and seeth horses, chariots, and a people more than thou, it says, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up from out of the land of Egypt. Reading to four. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh to the battle, men of God, remember, you have a duty to approach and speak unto the people. Because battle is a moment of fierceness. There must be a system of encouragement. And it is given to the men and the women of God. The priests, you are the ones who will speak to the people. Verse 3. And ye shall say unto them, Hear, O koinonia, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary ones, your God will surely come. He will come and save my God will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save Let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For... For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and save you. Please hear me. If anyone tells you action does not require courage, that person lied to you. Action requires courage. You are touring virgin dimensions that you may never have gone there. It takes courage. Number two, action requires persistence and resilience do exploits those who do exploits are people who are persistent and resilient hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 hebrews 6 15 please and so after he had patiently endured the he being abraham he obtained the promise galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 Galatians 6 and verse 9. It says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. It takes persistence and it takes resilience. The first time we had our crusade, gauging by the standard today, you would not call it a very successful meeting. Because when death, many things went, you know, we, we, very few people, I'm not sure we were up to 50 in that entire theater for the crusade. After weeks of praying and preparing, you would look and say, this person is a failure. These people are failures. And the very next 
as we were returning, God gave an instruction again to do another one. God for you. He will act as if he didn't see what happened to you. Are we together? Hmm. You gave somebody a lift, he stole your phone. By the next day, God will say, make sure you carry two people and bless them. Action requires persistence and resilience. Number three, action requires conviction. 2 Timothy 1.12 Action requires conviction. You will never be able to act until you are full of conviction. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, he said, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Let me tell you the truth. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. You see why transformation is very important? Because as you begin to push against these walls by faith, it will take conviction. I submit to you by the God of heaven, even if I came to Abuja here and Koinonia started and I failed, I would not return back in shame. One thing for sure I would have done is I would have gone for a retreat to verify and re-verify again. God, is it my mind? Am I just acting in the flesh or is this true? Can I tell you, there are many things that are not working now in your life, but it does not mean that God is not there. All you need to do is to stay pushing with resilience. Resilience and persistence. Number four, action requires unbending focus. Action requires unbending focus. 313 Philippians, 313. Action requires unbending focus. Brethren, I count myself, not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. Somebody say one thing. One more time, say one thing. When you are focusing on 10 things, you don't have focus. It is usually one thing at a time. There has to be something driving you. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the things that are before me, I press. Proverbs 4.25, unbending focus. Proverbs 4.25, unbending focus. It says, let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. That means you can't run. How many of you have seen people who are running the finals of a 100 meter dash? And whether someone is insulting you or someone is clapping for you, you don't turn back. Your eyes is set on the finish line. Part of the trainings of a winner is that the moment you start looking, ah, you are clapping for me. When it has to do with the race of life, both commendation and criticism can distract. You need to remain focused. On bending focus. Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. Action. Do exploits. Doing exploits requires unbending focus. Jesus said unto them, No man having put his hand on the or to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Focus. Remember Lot's wife. The Bible warns us about the wife of Lot. She was already on her way out of Sodom and Gomorrah with the warning not to turn back. He says, and if any draw back, Hebrews 10, I believe, 38 or so. And if any draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Hallelujah. If any draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Finally, doing exploits requires patience. Hebrews 6, 12, patience. Hebrews 6 12 and that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience that's what it takes to inherit the promises first Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 we're wrapping up first Peter 5 and verse 10 but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus listen he says after that ye have suffered a while 
make you perfect entire now establish you strengthen you and then settle you after you have suffered a while and remain pushing praying pressing acting he says he will make you entire perfect establish you strengthen you settle you Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for I reckon 8 18 that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us action requires courage action doing exploits requires persistence and resilience in the face of negative situations discouraging situations action requires conviction action requires unbending focus and finally action requires patience now let's look at daniel 11:32 as we prepare to pray now you will understand this scripture but the people that do know they shall be and they shall do this is my message tonight the roadmap to a triumphant destiny to a triumphant life involves knowing becoming and doing in that order you can't do without becoming you can't become without knowing so let me read it this way for you to do exploits you need to be strong and for you to be strong you need to know in this case they are God if you ever see anybody doing exploits know that that person must have been strong he became to do and for that person to have become are we together that person must have submitted himself to knowledge a naive medical student goes to the university as a school living certificate holder with the potential of becoming a doctor what happens knowledge knowledge they keep pumping knowledge for over six seven years and the medical doctor is evolving out of the ordinary person there is a becoming happening and do you know within the limit of his practice he will not be allowed to do certain things because he's still becoming sooner or later he gets accustomed to the medical practice and then by the time he is done he's now given liberty to start doing and then the process reverses uh, the process continues again even though he is a graduate he's not called a consultant is that correct knowledge starts again another version of becoming happens and then he can do exploits greater knowledge greater becoming greater exploits small knowledge small becoming small exploits high level knowledge high level transformation high level exploits the choice is yours i said before you life and death I said before you a mediocre destiny and a life of kingdom exploits that brings great glory to God and dignity to you and posterity judging you faithful by reason of your finishing strong I have fought a good fight I have finished my cause I have kept the faith I remind you again as I started that in destiny you must know how to fight you must know how to finish you must know how to keep please rise up on your feet i will hold on through the storm i will hold on to your word my story is about to change you're the lifter of men Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.